Well, what's going on guys and welcome back to a new video and in this video I'm going to show you how you can get social media marketing clients by using LinkedIn. No, I don't waste no time. Okay guys, so welcome back to the video um, and as I mentioned in today's video, we're going to be looking at LinkedIn and how you can basically use LinkedIn uh, to get more clients for your social media marketing agency. Now, a few little uh, mentions about LinkedIn and a quick little disclaimer, I am by no means a LinkedIn expert in any way, shape or form. Um, you know, for those of you that have been following my channel for a while, know that I'm very much a uh, big fan of email outreach. You know, we've completely automated our LinkedIn uh, or email outreach process. Um, and that is also the main method that we use for our agency. So in terms of the outreach, I say about 80 to 90% of our, no, I say about 70% of our clients come from email. Then we've got, let's say, 20% coming from referrals, and then the 10% um, is now basically a, a mix between LinkedIn and Upwork. Upwork is the freelancer website that uh, we or I used to use a lot in the past, and we still use um, you know, today, but not as much as we used to, and we've basically automated that, or outsourced is probably the better word for it because we've just got a virtual assistant um, that is basically you know, managing my uh, freelancer profile on Upwork. So uh, like I said, LinkedIn is still very much something that we are you know, discovering at the moment. Um, and that is why I wanted to document this as well, um, just to show you guys you know, what I have discovered so far, what I found that works, what doesn't work in my opinion, uh, what we are going to test moving forward, and um, just give you guys some tips and tricks along the way for those of you that are um, haven't done anything with LinkedIn um, at all whatsoever. So first thing you need to do is basically make sure that your LinkedIn is set up like a funnel or a landing page, if you will. So your profile needs to look the past. So if you're new to LinkedIn, uh, make sure that you have a cover photo that mentions what you do. Um, I'll quickly mention um, something about my cover photo in just a second. Have a professional look and profile photo, preferably a headshot with a, with a blank background. Um, I haven't got one with a blank background just yet, but for me, you know, this, this does the trick basically. Then you've got your headline, which is this one here. I've got Facebook ad specialists and this is where you basically mention who you are, what you do. This is your unique selling point basically. And, um, you know, quick disclaimer, you know, my profile is not optimized and set up uh, in any way, shape or form, which I will be getting into in just a second. I'm just going to briefly go over what you need to fill out, what you need to fill in. And then from there, I'll explain why my profile is not the best uh, profile to copy, to model or anything like that. So you've got your headline and then you've also got your about section here. My about section is okay. You know, there, there are a few little things that we can uh, tweak and change, but for now it does the job. Um, and the main thing that we've got is the call to action for a free 30 minute strategy session. Um, and we basically say, you know, there's a, a quick call that we can hop on if you're interested. Um, as you can see here, no strings attached, discovery call where we find out some more information about your business and current marketing efforts. Once I have a good understanding, I will give you a tailored strategy and give you some insights on what I can do to help. And then point three, we either move forward together and you become a client of mine where I implement the plan to massively increase profit and consistency of sales or we decide to part ways and take action on your own yeah, or, and you decide to take action on your own and that's completely fine too. Um, and then a bit of information about what I do and what I offer, etc. Then from there, you've got your activity where you can see, you know, what I've commented on, what I've shared, etc. And then we've got my experience, uh, Brampenier, obviously. Um, OCS, which was a side project that we actually finished um, in Q Q1 of 2020, JD Fitness, uh, for those of you that are OG subscribers will know what that is, and then just like my basic experience in terms of um, what I actually did uh, while I was in uni, etc. Then you've got your endorsements, which you've got here, and then you've got your recommendations and your interests uh, at the bottom. So what you need to fill out as like a minimum viable LinkedIn profile, obviously the more you fill out, the better you will rank, etc. in LinkedIn. You know, see it as a sort of LinkedIn algorithm. You know, if everything is filled out, LinkedIn will favor your profile over someone that hasn't, hasn't done anything to their profile, basically. So minimum viable LinkedIn page would be a cover photo, 
a professional looking um, profile photo, a enticing headline, um, about section where you give a call to action for a basically a you know, low ticket, uh, low barrier to entry type of offer. So in this case, a free strategy session is what I've used so far. Um, and then also make sure that you fill out what you do um, in terms of your agency. So as you can see here at Brampanair, we work with larger econ businesses that want Brampanair's expertise to consistently generate more high quality uh, leads and sales through high level Facebook advertising strategies. I don't know why it actually says leads because that is wrong. Um, e-commerce obviously sales so more uh, to generate more um, more sales and a higher ROAS through high-level Facebook advertising strategies save that um, your profiles me safe you also want to update your secondary language uh, yeah that's fine update profile um, so this will be in Dutch Actually, it's still in English, so then I'll probably just save it uh, and just leave it as is. So as you can see, I've got two different languages on my LinkedIn. Don't ask me how I've done this. I've done this once in the past, and um, I don't actually know how I've done that. Um, so I will explain that in a later video if I actually figure out how I did that. But anyway, like I said, minimum viable profile is uh, what I just mentioned before. Then in terms of what I... I'm doing wrong or what I could optimize even further. I don't mention any type of niche or industry on my profile. And the thought process behind that was, okay, you know, if I keep it relatively generic, then I will speak to a larger um, amount of people, you know, because um, if I tailor this towards car dealerships and a gym owner comes along, then they will not look at my profile because you know it's all around car dealerships. However, because I'm speaking or trying to speak to everyone, I'm actually speaking to no one. And we've tested this out ourselves. So at first, my entire profile was um, tailored towards uh, e-commerce. And because we are now testing out um, LinkedIn as a actual method of outreach, we thought, okay, let's actually not try and reach out to e-com stores via LinkedIn because we've already got like a sort of way of doing so let's actually try and get local lead generation clients through linkedin like i said it's not our main focus our main niche but because we are testing this out we actually want to see okay what works and what doesn't so um what we did my head of operations elliot tailored his profile completely to dentists why because we have got two dental clients uh, still on from you know uh, when we started in um we started doing dental clients in 2020 yeah, actually it was yeah it was the start of this year so we got two clients still from the start of this year that we're getting really good results for so that is the reason why we tailored this um towards dentists so we've got elliot's profile on the one hand where um you know we've got it completely tailored towards dentist dental cover photo um dental headline and then you know he's also sharing some stuff about um you know like dentists and uh, facebook ads etc and then obviously he's got his uh, endorsements as well all around social media marketing. Um, and then we've got my profile on the other side where it's fairly generic. And we are basically doing the same amount of outreach. So on both profiles, we are reaching out and making connections and building relationships up um, with you know potential dental clients. And Elliot is getting far more results than I am and far uh, more replies, etc. Like I'm literally just getting blanks. Like I'm making connections to people um, you know, that own a dentistry, etc. And I'm literally just reaching out, not on salesy, just saying, how are you? How's the dentist business going? And I'm just getting no replies whatsoever. Elliot, on the other hand, is getting, you know, like I said, you know, I think one out of every three people that he makes connection with, he has a brief conversation with because they can see, okay, his whole profile is based around dentists. So you just need to think to yourself, if I make a connection request to, um, let's call the dentist, John. So John, the dentist, sees two connection requests um, one from Elliot and one from me, and uh, he checks out both profiles and he sees that both of us have sent him a message. He's going to reply to Elliot first. Why? Because his whole profile is based around uh, you know, what he actually wants. He wants more uh, dental clients. Speaking of that, uh, another thing that we've also noticed is, um, so I think last week, because we changed this this week just to see if it actually makes a difference. Um, last week, we had this very, very specific. We had helping dental practices uh, get 20 to 30 more dental implant clients by using Facebook ads, which is very specific. 
and we got a lot of comments about it. We got a lot of, um, you know, messages saying, you know, I, I see that you're talking about uh, dental implant clients. You know, that is something that we offer as well. Um, can we know more about what it is that you offer? And now we've tried, or last week basically, we tried helping dental practices to acquire new patients through social media marketing, which is slightly broader and slightly more vague because social media marketing for a dentist, you know, it can mean anything, right? So um, we've noticed a drop off in not necessarily responses, but interest uh, in our service because we are less specific now. Um, so that is another thing that I would mention is know your target audience. What is it, like what problem can you solve for the uh, niche or industry? So first thing we need to do is make sure that you pick a niche for LinkedIn. If you haven't you know, completely settled on a niche for your agency in general, don't worry, but just for LinkedIn, it would, definitely help your conversion rate, etc. if you just pick one niche and tailor everything towards that. So it's almost like a profile funnel for LinkedIn. Um, so if you're focused on car dealerships, make sure that everything mentions car dealerships. And then what you need to do is find out the pain point of um, the owner owners of car dealerships and work that into your headline, okay? Another thing I wanna mention about the headline is that when you are uh, using the search bar or the sales navigator, if, if that's something that you have, um, the search bar or sales navigator will use your headline as a keyword. So for example, if we use the sales navigator, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with the sales navigator, it's basically like the paid version of LinkedIn and it will let you reach out to many more businesses and see much more information than the free version will. So for example, um, if we type in dentists in the search bar here, and then what you can do is um, you can filter. So we've got dentists and let's say we do um, second and third connections in the United States, that's fine. Okay, and then we can see that a lot of people will be blanked out, they haven't got a profile, etc. cetera. Um, this is because, or what you'll also notice is that you can't actually reach out to all of these people. And what you'll notice is that if you have the sales navigator, you, you can actually reach out to more people and there's more people that um, you can basically you know send a message to, if you will. So with the free version of LinkedIn, I highly recommend you, you uh, guys all use the free version of LinkedIn because it does work. Um, but the Sales Navigator, if you have not used the free trial just yet, make sure you check it out. Um, you don't need to fill out your credit card details or anything like that. So what you can do is just take the free trial, see what it's like. Um, if you have not got the financial resources to continue with it, then just you know leave it as is. So what we can do, we can type in dentists and then go, and then we can use the filters here. So what we can do is we can add a title. So we want owners of dentists. So owner, um, what else? Founder, although I don't think a lot of dentists will use the word founder, but you know, we can still try it. So dental founder and owner, we'll just keep that for now. Um, and then what else? Locations, United States, United Kingdom. Wait for that to load. There we go. Okay, so we've got dentists in the UK, United States, that have the title founder or owner in their, um, in their name, basically. So as you can see here, this guy, George Figueroa, is the founder of Dentist Lead Engine. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that he's an owner of a dentist. I'm guessing he's actually an agency owner, um, but he still comes up in the search bar. Why? Because he's got the keyword dentist in his profile. So moving on, um, let's see what else have we got. Is there anyone else that might not necessarily be relevant to us? Um, dentist owner, founder and chairman of Comprehensive Finance. So Bruce Baird is the founder and chairman of Border Comprehensive Finance. So for some reason, he's come up in our search bar. So we click on him and see what it is that has made Bruce come up in our search results. Let's see. Ah, here we go. So his ability to help other dentists, and that is why he's actually come up in our search results. So knowing this, we can reverse engineer that and use that to our benefit when setting up our profile. So if you write dentist helping 
dentists, um, I don't know, get more dental implants uh, clients on a regular basis, or if personal trainer, helping um, affluent people, people that already have their finances on point and want to get their physique on point, you know, something like that. Again, if you're sort of like targeting personal trainers in the um, like high ticket personal trainers, basically, you, know, you can have something like that in your personal profile. So really think about what is it that people will look for in terms of the search bar, you know, to find someone like you. So, you know, they're going to try and figure out um, how can I get in contact with a dentist agency, um, a dental consultant, anything like that, and then make sure that, because um, you're basically trying to reverse engineer what, what the dentist will fill out if they were trying to find you, and then you can use that to your benefit. So, like I said, the great thing about LinkedIn is that you can search for people based on a job title. And the great thing about LinkedIn as well is, well, first of all, you can send them a message. So if you click on Howard Leonard here, for example, uh, we can send them a message. What we can also do is uh, we can add this person. He is a third connection. So basically what a third connection means is that we cannot actually add him, at least as far as I know, we can't add him within our network because he's outside of our network. Um, what we can actually do though, we can still try and add him within LinkedIn. Um, let's see, what does his profile look like? Okay, so he's got a blue polo on and he is bald. Let's see if it comes up. So I can see, I've, I think I've already lost him. I oh, know, here we go. So as you can see, we can't actually make a connection with Howard Leonard just yet, but we can actually send him a message saying, you know, is it okay if, we, if um, you know, we make a connection or anything like that. So what you need to realize with LinkedIn is that you've got your first connections, which is just you, uh, just you know your network. The second connections um, is basically people that you have mutual connections with, and then the third connections are basically people outside of your sphere. So what we can do is we can try and send him a message, hoping that he will reply, or we can use something called Hunter.io. Uh, Hunter's not available for LinkedIn. My apologies, not Hunter.io. Rocket Reach is what I meant to say. So Rocket Reach will see if we can find a email base, uh, basically you know attached to this profile. So I can see Howard Lennon has found one email. So let's see if we can add this person and see if we can find his email. There we go. So we've got his email here. So we can copy that and actually send them an email. Or like I said, we can send them a message through LinkedIn itself. So that is basically how we can make a uh, connection with people on LinkedIn. And then in terms of the actual message, obviously, you know, we see a lot of these automated messages. Um, we are also in the process of trying out a few different types of email um, automation softwares. There aren't a lot that I prefer, there aren't a lot that I like. Why? Because it's also like, let me just quickly go through my message and see if there's any that I can actually show you. By the way, for those of you that message me on LinkedIn, I, I don't reply on LinkedIn, so the easiest way to get in contact with me is through Facebook or Instagram. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Joshua Daniel George or just send me a message on Facebook. Um, usually the prior, like the order of priority is the Facebook group, so the free Facebook group, the Lifestyle Design Community. From there, I will reply to people on Instagram DM and then from there, uh, people that private message me on Facebook. Um, so for example, this uh, female here, as you can see, she sent a bunch of automated messages. Um, now, people can ju you can just tell right away that this is not a real message. Um, there's massive spaces in terms of the paragraphs in between here as well. You know, you can just tell right away this is not this is not something that a human being would reply, right? So that is just something that you need to keep keep you know in mind that. Um, People are getting bombarded with automated messages like this. Yes, you know, if you tried this back in the day, you know, you'd literally, uh, you'd clean up on LinkedIn. But nowadays, people are getting bombarded with messages like this on a daily basis. Um, for example, this one here, again, you know, automated message, I, I, immediate call to action to schedule a 20 minute call. Like you can tell right away when these messages are real and when these messages are fake. Um, let me see if this one is real or not. Let's see, oh God, that, that's actually me. I was just trying to realize that I actually reached out to this person. Um, let's see if there's any other 
messages. Um, so I see this message. This person has mentioned my YouTube, so I know. Okay, that is more personalised. You know, that is not a automated message. Um, I'm, apologies if I'm, if I'm sort of like bashing at anyone. You know, that watches this channel have sent a message to me. But I'm just trying to figure out or trying to you know explain that a lot of messages will actually be automated, and that is what we want to try and um, you know not have you know or basically not have. Uh, people think of when they see our messages so that is also the reason why i don't recommend the um of course you know you can also make the the initial outreach message just say happy to connect but as soon as they make that connection request and you send them another automated message saying let's hop on a 20 minute call like stuff like that just, just doesn't work anymore people know when it's real when it's fake so people can tell the difference between something like this and a genuine message out about um you know my youtube channel for example i know that is personalized because how else would they know that I've got a YouTube channel, right? So in terms of your message, try and not sound like a robot, sound like, try and sound like a human being. And a great tip that I can give you guys is if you, for example, go back to this um, Howard Leonard guy. Um, let me get him back up. There we go. He was just there. Howard Leonard. Just waiting for that to load. There we go. So what we could do when we send that message to make sure that he um, accepts our request, we can look and see, okay, is there anything that we can mention that is not automated that might give Howard the impression that we aren't just a bot trying to reach out to as many people as possible. So for example, we can mention the modern healthcare. Just say, hey, I see that we've got a mutual interest. We've both got an interest in modern healthcare. What are your thoughts on the most recent interview that they had about the pandemic? See if he replies. And something like that would be much more personalized them just saying hey i own an agency would you like a 20 minute call so that is an, another thing that um, i highly recommend you guys do and yes it will take a little bit longer but it's at the end of the day it's all relationship building so yes you can automate the initial message but when you're actually trying to start a conversation i would highly recommend personalizing that as much as possible another quick tip um or another reason why i really do like linkedin is because you can search on company so for example we've got nike here and we can see that nike has 86,491 employees on linkedin so we can click on that and now we can basically try and find the exact person that we want to speak to so we're not speaking to assistants secretaries anything like that we can now go directly to the person that we want so if you want for example to connect with the brand manager we know okay stephanie green or Gein, um, not sure how you pronounce that is the actual brand manager at night for women's sportswear and we can also see who is our shared connection so i can see that jaquille um, is our shared connection so maybe we can use that to our benefit um, to say hey i see that you also know jaquille um, you know how have you guys gotten acquainted or how do you guys know each other anything like that or like i said go to the interest as you can see because she's a second connection we also see more information on this person we can say hey i see that you um, actually went to maastricht uh, which is in the netherlands for university um, you know, I'm also based in the Netherlands and I don't know, start, start a conversation like that. Okay. So anyway, in terms of the sort of like the call to actions for this video, the homework that you guys are getting from me is to build a minimum viable LinkedIn profile, then start reaching out to your target uh, audience or your custom avatar. Ne make sure you niche down. So only focus on one specific type of, um, customer or client. And then from there, um, you can start a conversation with this person without trying to use a bot. Um, like I said, I'm not saying that you can't use bots to make the initial outreach. Um, like I said, we are looking into different types of bots for this. Um, haven't stumbled across one that I am a big fan of just yet. Um, I'll probably do a video on that at a later date. But as soon as you make that connection request, make sure that you have a personalized message to build up that relationship with this person don't go in all guns blazing and mention that you've got an agency and that you want to give a 20 minute consultation or anything like that because it doesn't work people hate that and people just get bombarded with messages like that on a daily basis so make sure you personalize it as much as possible so that is all i've got for today hope you enjoyed this video leave a comment down below if you've got any more tips for my linkedin any tips that you think would help um, people that are using LinkedIn for outreach or just any tips about um, LinkedIn outreach in general. Subscribe to the channel for more and see you all in the next video.